Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Comic Pow. Um, I'm Eric, and um, today I'm going to be talking about Daybreak. Uh, first of all, let me just say really quickly, um, sorry there hasn't been a lot of content recently. Um, it's just been extremely busy um, with my new uh, six-month-old twins. Um, I mean, I guess little by little they're becoming less and less new, but uh, they're still in the phase where they require a lot of um, care um, constantly uh, as opposed to being able to um, play by themselves for a few minutes or play with their older sister. So, um, however, I hope after this um, to kind of find a little more time and get back on track. And of course, there's also um, Baltimore Comic Con coming on um, late this summer, and I'll be having articles on that as usual, and I expect to be covering the convention as usual. So back to Daybreak. <coughs> Daybreak is a pretty unusual title. Um, I happened to get it through one of the Humble Bundles. And uh, the first thing that's very interesting about it is that it's told from a first person perspective uh, in terms of the, the rear. So really it, it looks like a first person shooter, uh, which is, I'm not gonna say this is the first time it's ever been done, I highly doubt that, but it's certainly the first time that I've ever seen it, especially for the length of an entire, an entire story as opposed to just a short um, chunk of a, of a story here and there. And so it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. I'm used to tons of video games, um, including uh, Portal, Half-Life, um, lots of the, the early Final Fantasy games on the 16-bit and 8-bit era, uh, where although you could see your character, um, oftentimes you had a main character that didn't talk, uh, specifically Chrono Trigger. Um, but I'm really not used to that in comics. So, so it's kind of interesting to have um, characters talking at you the entire time, but you don't really give any response. Uh, and I, I thought that was pretty unique. I, th I think that's, it's definitely, it seems to be the type of story that would come from someone that's grown up like me with these uh, first person video games and other narratives that kind of would say, hey, why not make a comic book this way? Uh, I, I didn't really um, read up about about the comic at all. That's usually what I like to do with comics and other medium like uh, movies and TV shows because often um, uh, reviews or even previews tend to really give away a lot. So I had no idea what, what I was dealing with coming in. You just uh, come in and you see a guy that's, that's missing one arm and it looks like an apocalyptic wasteland um, and you don't really understand what's going on. It's not until a good chunk into the into the story when you finally realize that it's a zombie apocalypse. Um, I guess the other interesting thing about the story as a whole is that it doesn't really seem to have as much of a story as um, most other comics. Uh, it's really, it's really kind of this character taking you um, by the hand, almost literally, and showing you what's happened to this world ever since the zombies. Um, there isn't really a a traditional narrative that takes you all the way through. Um, so, What's interesting about what's interesting about what's interesting about that is if you take a look at something like The Walking Dead, right? The the purpose of that really is not that there's a zombie apocalypse. It's almost a MacGuffin. Really, it's how do people act after the world has ended? You know, in the beginning, there's a lot of misinformation and hope, and later on, they realize that it's hopeless. And they have to deal with this new reality, and there's still the store, larger stories and micro stories within that, they're kind of carrying it through. And with Daybreak, they said, okay, 
if the purpose is to show you what life's like in a zombie apocalypse, let's just do that. Let's just show you what life is like in a zombie apocalypse without actually having a narrative, without really delving into anyone's backstory. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to see it, just take it to the most naked version of that story. I really didn't get the ending. Um, but I guess that's one of those things that can happen sometimes when you have a more of an unclear narrative. Um, there's, there's a lot more open to interpretation as opposed to being spelled out. Um, overall, I think that the author um, does a good job um, in, in expressing you know, exactly what life is like under this zombie apocalypse. I would say that it's definitely not for any, everybody as a non-traditional um, narrative, and I could see where um, some people would find it almost too disorienting. But I, I would say that in general, uh, especially if you're used to pl um, playing these first-person games and having these first-person visual narratives from other media, I think that you won't find this story too jarring. So um, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I hope there will be a little bit less of a gap in um, articles going forward. Um, but uh, just bear with me while I get adjusted to things with the, with the new children. And uh, if a worst case scenario, um, things will continue sporadically through from now until Comic-Con, there'll be a big burst of stuff at Comic-Con. And then um, things will pick up again um, sometime um, later this year. But we'll see, we'll see uh, what's possible and what I'm able to do. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.